Before I give the floor to colleagues, let me first of all welcome from the Greek permanent representation to the European Union, Ambassador Ioannis Vrailas. Thanks also for organizing uh, this event. I will now give the floor to colleagues, and we begin with Mr. Antonio Lopez Isturis for the EPP. Two minutes. Thank you, President. Uh, Senor Ministro. Okay. Minister, thank you very much for being with us during these trying and difficult times. Let me express my sadness for the tragedy that occurred in Moria. Um, Vice President of the Committee, Sinas, will be travelling to Greece today, and um, we know that Greece has, no has mobilised all the um, mechanisms to show solidarity and to deal with the immediate situation and uh, we express our solidarity with Greece and with the people of Moria in these difficult times. Now I also express solidarity with uh, Cyprus uh, in the face of aggression from Turkey which represents a clear threat uh, to stability in the region. Now we also believe that uh, the frontier and the border with Greece is a European border and we will defend that border. Now, we know what's going on in the Eastern Mediterranean. It's not a contradiction of legit legitimate positions. It's not a uh, dispute of long those signs. There is clear provocation. It's a clear threat and a violation of international law. While um, Turkey is fraternizing w with uh, extremist groups, uh, Hamas and other forces, so let's not fall for the narrative that's being touted by Turkey. There's a clear position, a right one and a wrong one, and it's as simple as that. Minister, to come to my question, do you not believe that the time is ripe now for sanctions to be agreed upon, which is the only language that the regime will understand and uh, that, the, that the European Union should not shy away from speaking now? Thank you. Thank you, Antonio Lopez Sturis, for the S&D group, Nikos Andrulakis. Parakalo. I would like to welcome the minister to our committee. What you have said is very, very important. Uh, we're talking about a country uh, which uh, has illegally invaded Syria. It also uh, tramples on the rights of uh, citizens of the European Union and is involved in the civil war in Libya. There's also the issue, very painful issue, of its behaviour uh, regarding migration and continues to provoke with its behaviour uh, and also uh, the episode with uh, Aya Sophia. Um, now, the sanctions which are being proposed might not help uh, the difficult situation we are in today. It might actually do him a favour uh, because uh, when the discussions were held about Syria, we, uh, the Council, uh, the European Council, uh, spoke about an embargo of weapons. Why can't we therefore do the same today when it is actually uh, violating the uh, territorial waters of uh, a European country? Next week, we, the Socialist Group, are going to be tabling amendments which will set out the fact that the High Representative has to take into consideration a weapons embargo against Turkey because Greek citizens should not be in a state of fear uh, that uh, weapons are going to be used against us. This is terrible and it must stop. So. This is something that will have to be debated, as well as our new relations with Turkey within the EU. What is that relationship going to be? We have to have an ongoing and immediate dialogue so that this relationship uh, takes into consideration 
uh, all these aspects and all these violations of human rights. Thank you. Thank you for a new group, Nathalie Loiseau. Merci. Monsieur le Ministre, trop souvent... Thank you very much indeed. Too often, Europe has failed when it came to showing solidarity with Greece. In the debt crisis, it was too little too late. In the migration crisis, Greece was left to fend for itself, and Europe closed its eyes when it came to the disaster unfolding in Lesbos until things became, went up in flames. Now, we see a clear, direct threat when it comes to security, our security, uh, with these threats on Cyprus and Greece. And I think it's right that Europe should show solidarity to Greece in these times. For too long now, uh, Turkey's been pursuing a fait accompli policy, violating international law, multiplying provocations and uh, threats, um, which are felt across Europe. Today, I feel uneasy. I feel uneasy about the fact that we will be receiving the Turkish minister on the very same day. Now, some wish to speak uh, the victim and the perpetrator in equal ways, which is not the right approach under the current circumstances. Greece is a member of the European Union. Its borders are our borders. It shares our democratic uh, values and the rule of law. It is not responsible for any kind of prov provocation vis-à-vis -vis Ankara and states its openness for negotiations time and again. You cannot negotiate when you're brought to your knees, when you are suffering constant aggression and threats. And Europe cannot negotiate alone. I'm very happy that the Med7 uh, countries are willing to engage, but this cannot be something that concerns only seven member states. This Mediterranean Sea is our common sea, and we should share, join in this common cause with Greece. Thank you. Thank you. For the ID group, Mr Mariani. Obviously, he's neither present nor connected remotely. Would any other colleague from the ID group like to take the floor? Next on my list would be actually be Yak Madison, but I see that last Patrick back. Please, on the list. Bitte sehr. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Minister, thank you for being here with us today. It's clear that in the past, Greece has done everything within its powers and continues to do so to ensure that tensions can de-escalate with regard to uh, Turkey relations. What's the next step from your perspective so that we can slow down and stem this, these activities um, carried out by Tur Turkey? Now, I think it's the time for Europe to show solidarity with uh, Greece because we're seeing this conflict threatening everyone's security. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Sergei Lagodinsky, bitte. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, Minister. Um, yes, indeed, our solidarity with you on, uh, um, uh, on your legitimate rights, and also our solidarity with you on uh, the situation in Maria. And Maria, this is, this is uh, the Lesbos camp. And um, I would say that the real European solidarity is not just about weapons. It is also about our common migrant policies. This is where the solidarity should be shown. Uh, and it's interesting that every speaker before me talked about solidarity and remembered solidarity when it was about uh, weapons and um, and uh, war and fossil fuels. Um, uh, just very briefly, um, uh, what chances do you see to de-escalate the situation uh, from your side, we will speak very clearly with the Turkish uh, uh, foreign minister and tell him about our uh, uh, absolutely decisive uh, uh, position regarding any provocation from their side. But I would like to know, what are you, uh, uh, Greece, ready to do in order to show 
uh, that you, as you said, are ready to come to the table and to start a dialogue regarding a common security architecture in the Mediterranean, and also regarding uh, and maybe a new uh, uh, a way of dealing with our Turkish partners. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergei Lagodinsky for the ECR group, Hermann Terch. Buenos días, muchas gracias, Presidente. Eh... Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. First and foremost, I'd like to express our full solidarity with Greece and its people um, whose borders are being violated on the constant basis, and that's an EU border, which is everyone's duty to defend. We have a clear message, and which we reiterate because others have already made this point. We have here a European border that must be defended in the face of systematic aggression, and the entire union depends on this very strong and firm message that we send out and what we see is confusion continued um, threats to the Mediterranean border which of course is also a Spanish uh, border which is continues to be violated by uh, hordes of illegal migrants reaching our shores coming from Morocco and Algeria in particular. We express our full support to some of the measures we expect will be taken in the context of the forthcoming Council uh, meeting that will uh, dissuade Turkey from pursuing this path. It's a path that has uh, contributed to destabilization worldwide. We're seeing the impact in Venezuela with support to a killer regime, um, the Maduro regime, Erdogan supporting him, and in Tehran, de disastrous actions there with destabilization that is felt across the globe, including Spain and Europe. We cannot... Uh, we have to take a firm stance with regard to an ally of Tehran and Maduro. So a firm, strong message vis-à-vis -vis Erdogan is something that we very much need, and it's in Greece's interest, but in Europe's wider interest as well. Thank you, Herman Terch. For the GUI group, Stelios Kologlu. Um, good morning, uh, Minister. Uh, I have two points to make, two questions. Uh, the first one, uh, tackling the Turkish aggressivity, you have uh, just suggested some clever and effective uh, sanction measures against Turkey. Can you please specify uh, what, uh, um, what are, uh, you have in mind? And the second thing is about Moria. Uh, besides the, uh, the, uh, the, the problems uh, having to do with the, the policy and the mistakes of the Greek government, now we're facing uh, a big problem. There is a solidarity of European level. Uh, are you going uh, to ask again our European par partners to, uh, uh, to, to, to implement the European values and to uh, re-examine the relocation of the refugees that are packed and uh, kind of ho being hostages uh, in Greece, um, because the other countries don't want to, to accept and implement the agreements. Uh, so are you going, uh, with the occasion of the Moria disaster, uh, to ask again uh, different uh, measures for that? Thank you. Thank you. And finally, for the non inscri Martin Jengeshi. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minister. I share the deep concern of my colleagues about the rising tension between Greece and Turkey on the dispute over uh, maritime boundaries in the Mediterranean Sea and the competition over gas resources in the East Mediterranean. And uh, I'm concerned that this tit for tat and the diplomatic standoff is threatening with an open conflict. Now, it's a historic and geographical fact that the Turkish coastline is dotted with uh, Greek islands. Um, does that bestow Greece with basically limitless territorial 
uh, rights uh, in uh, an international conflict of international uh, right, how realistic is the approach, uh, the Greek position of basically unlimited influence of islands in determining maritime boundaries? That's my first question. Uh, my second question um, relates to the issue of a divided Cyprus. If we want to find a solution to the East Med crisis, we have to stop scratching the surface and deal with the problem itself, which is the issue of the divided island since 1974 after a Turkish invasion of the island. However, the story does not start there. Uh, it was succeeded by a pro enosis coup d'etat by the Greek forces that would have left the Turkish Cypriots deprived of their rights on the island. Now, the EU has made an enormous mistake of letting in Cyprus in 2004 to join the European Union before sorting out this ethnic conflict of the island, on the island, uh, I believe that there is only one long-term solution, the only solution if the parties return to the UN brokered plan to share the power between all the indigenous people of the island, Greek and Turkish alike, would you agree with that analysis, yes or no? Would Greece be supportive of rebooting the negotiations on the island between all sides of the Greek island or the, the, the island of Cyprus? Thank you very much. Sir, this was the first round. Minister, I have been informed that the interpreters are ready to stay 10 minutes longer than planned, so we have time till 10 past 11. You are free to answer as long as you wish, but there are many other colleagues who would like to take the floor, so perhaps we can have a second round. It's up to you. Well, uh, I'll try to be brief. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for your comments. And I think it would be very, uh, very important that Mr. Tsavusoglu would hear the voice coming from the parties of the European Parliament that all condemn a certain behavior which is aggressive, it's illegal and jeopardize the security architecture. And it's a very important message to come from all the parts of the European Parliament, this message in one voice with a few, a few exceptions. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to, to tell you is here we, we don't have two options only. Either we put sanctions or we don't put sanctions on Turkey. What we have ahead of us is a great dilemma on how to deal with an important economic partner, a candidate member, a country that has made in the past, at least, several steps towards uh, Europe, now has stopped acting as a candidate member anymore by introducing uh, internally legislation would, that would be unacceptable at the European country and in the same time jeopardizes the stability and the security and the status quo. So we have to decide what kind of relationship we need to have with Turkey. And I think that uh, uh, President Macron and others and President Michel talked about a stick and a carrot. We have to offer, but in the same time, we have to set this clear message that I talked about before, that we are not here to play, and we are not here to water our values and to, to let room for behaviors that are un unacceptable within our values. So the message coming from the European Council in a few weeks has to be, listen, you have a limited time to refrain from all the threats, to withdraw all the military forces, to go back to the table of discussion and dialogue, and we can work out a peaceful solution, not only for the Eastern Mediterranean and the delimitation of the maritime zones, as Greece is willing to do so, but also the other issues that have been stalled all these years in the uh, EU-Turkey relations, or 
The other side is that EU becomes strong and shows its teeth and says that we are not going to tolerate and we are going to exclude you from our common, uh, common house by putting you sanctions. Sanctions that are not directed to the people of Turkey that have, uh, they don't have to pay, but are directed in order to make people of Turkey push their government to change in course. I personally believe that sanctions is a very, uh, is a very delicate tool. And sometimes we have used them in a way that didn't bring any result. And we have to reconsider the way that we are uh, doing, putting these sanctions. Therefore, I think that the sanctions should be directed in order to put heavy pressure to the Turkish government to alter its course. Because I don't believe that Turkish people are belligerent uh, uh, people and they don't want to be part of our European Union. And they want to, to get into war or a, a never-ending dispute with Greece or with Cyprus. I believe the opposite. And the polls coming from Turkey show that there isn't a rising support to President Erdogan because of his high-stake rhetoric and his uh, attitude. The opposite. So the, uh, the sanctions should, should put this pressure and they should be severe for a limited time, but severe, in order to send a message that Europe is here to negotiate, but also it's here to defend its values. Well, uh, if I may, one point add about Moria, because I've heard uh, some things. There is a big discussion, uh, both in the Council and in the Parliament, about how we are dealing with the immigration issue. It's true that Greece has been left alone to deal with thousands of people coming in our country. Lately, we have applied a policy of strict control of the borders with the help of European forces. And this policy has worked. I think it's important to see the new uh, agenda on migration, to see it with an open spirit and to see how to use what is the force and the power of the European Union in order to make three things. First of all, to give shelter to those who have to be sheltered in Europe, and these are the asylum seekers. Second is to block illegal migrants from coming in. <laughs> And the third is to find a way of how to repatriate these people who are deadlocked in the hotspots back to their homes if they are not granted asylum. And it has to be a mechanism that it will be a mechanism that will work because some of the some of parts of our uh, uh, legal system they don't really bring a result. They just postpone uh, the, uh, the decision-making process, which is lasting forever, and uh, definitely also to send a message to the, the islands, the Greek islands and the other parts of Europe that they host hotspots, that these are people, are, these European citizens, are not doomed to live in the borders of, of the European Union. Uh, they shouldn't live with a problem constantly, and they shouldn't tolerate behaviors uh, that are not uh, accepted. So uh, I think we should work in a, in a uh, spirit of uh, changing our architecture and sending our, uh, out clear messages. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Colleagues, I have nine further requests to take the floor. I will close the speaking list, that's for sure, and let's see how far we can get. It's one and a half minutes each now, and we begin with Paolo Rangel for the EPP. Please press the speak button, sir.
Okay, obviously we have difficulties. Perhaps we'll get back to Mr. Rangel in a moment. Then we move to the SND speaker, Deepma Kusta, one and a half minutes. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Foreign Minister, for your presentation. Allow me to begin by expressing my solidarity with the people of Greece. With regard to the conflict with Turkey, you are facing uh, belligerent threats which are unacceptable. The avoidance of violent conflict is a part and possible of international law, so we therefore need to support a, an arms embargo vis-à-vis -vis Turkey. Turkey cannot threaten Greece and EU uh, with threat and then expect us to deliver arms to the country. Now, Foreign Minister, I also urge everyone to think very carefully about a path to de-escalation. We urgently need dialogue with Turkey and between Turkey and Greece to de-escalate things. When it comes to the gas situation, there are different legal perspectives on the matter. The uh, case law would suggest that in this kind of dispute, a compromise is negotiated. Would you be willing to pursue this kind of negotiation with a view to arriving at a compromise? Now, with regards to the troubling events in Moria, we are shocked by the events, but they were nevertheless um, too foreseeable. And ultimately, your government is responsible for uh, the events that have uh, taken place there. And the situation there is uh, unbearable. Do you not feel ashamed about the situation there to some extent? That uh, And the, the shame that this brings upon uh, Europe and the fact that we are, are to tolerate these um, conditions. Thank you very much indeed. Angel? Okay, that's not the case. Then we come to the Renew Group, Bernard Guetta. Monsieur le ministre, je ne vais pas revenir sur les expressions. Mr. Minister, I won't be coming back on any expressions of solidarity that you've been presented by almost all of my colleagues. Of course, that was necessary because Greece is a member state of the European Union, and this solidarity is indispensable because Turkey is violating both all international laws as well as the rules of decent behavior on the international arena. However, you have not answered one question that was raised by one of my colleagues, and I would like to pick up on that. Cyprus. He asked you, and I am asking you, and I'm asking you once again, are you ready or would you be ready and when to take further steps on this matter? Because despite everything, in fact, the fact is that the Turkish Cypriots had accepted this, and the Greek Cypriots had refused it. Thank you very much. Merci bien. For the EPP, Manolis Kefalogiannis. Thank you, President. Three questions. Sanctions against Turkey. What should be the content? What are the available means at European disposal? What measures should be included? Second question. Escalation of tension. Your estimation on the eventuality that might even lead to a war incident. Third, Castello Rizzo Island. Turkish naval exercise in a distance close to six nautical miles in the hard core of Greece's sovereignty. How do you comment on that? Dear colleagues, in accordance with international law, Greece has the indispensable right 
on 12 miles of territory sea limits under Article 3, Law of the Sea. But Turkey, since 1996, declared casus belli, state of war, if Greece extends its territory sea limits in 12 miles. By pointing a gun on Greece and Cyprus head, Turkey is requesting dialogue. This is not the case for the European Union. Thank you. For the SND, Tonino Pizzula, one and a half minutes. Mr. Mr. Pizzula is not connected. Then we move on to Jack Madison from the ID Group. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Minister. Mr. Barbizotis, um, first of all, Osko, of course, I've been several times in Greece, so I absolutely understand your problems with the migration, and we have to all, all the time remind that Turkey is part of this problem, because uh, I have met several times with the officials from the Greece side, have been in Lesbos, in Athens, and I know very well that about 90 percent of those people are not asylum seekers, they are illegal migrants. And uh, one responsibility is from the Turkish side, who have actually promoted this illegal migration to make some bigger problems for the neighbor of countries like Greece. So uh, in this case, we are absolutely in solidarity with you. Uh, also, I actually have some question. Uh, it's not part of the EU thing, of course, but it's part of the NATO. I'm from Estonia, and I know very well about the problems with the Turkey also for our countries, like at summer, they were blocking from Turkey the new defense plan for the Baltic states, only because that some of the EU countries haven't recognized some opposition party in Turkey as a terrorist organization. So it was like the self-interest uh, for the Erdogan to have some political win in the, in the Turkey, and that's why he was blocking some new defense plan in the NATO. So, and if I see like the actions, what he's doing, like with the promoting with the radical Islam, then I have a question for you. Do you really believe that maybe in 10 or 20 years we can have this kind of partner in NATO, like Turkey, who's treating their partners like Greece, Estonia, and other countries like in the EU? Thank you very much. First of Thank you. For the Greens, Reinhard Bütikofer, one and a half minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Minister, for being with us. Um, obviously, Turkish aggression is unacceptable. But how do we get out of the crisis? Um, you didn't mention much about the German mediation efforts, and I would invite you to make a comment or two in that regard, whether you consider that this could help with de-escalating the crisis. I found that you used exceedingly polemical language with regard to Turkey. I wonder whether you're really set towards downscaling the conflict or whether you're happy with the rate of escalation because you feel that this is your chance of finding European solidarity. Thank you. Final two speakers are Ms. Sofko and then Mr. Jambatsky. Ms. Sofko for the EPP. Thank you very much and uh, thank you, Minister, for the document that you have sent us previous to these meetings that outlines the Erdogan's intention and uh, his long-term uh, determination um, and the, the, the plan that he's, he's executing at the moment. Um, my um, view on this issue is um, that we are going very um, into a very deep water at this moment because Erdogan will not step back. Um, European Union is uh, scared to confront him because of these refugees that he's threatening us with, uh, with migration. And I fully solidarize with Greece in uh, what you are uh, going through at this moment. And um, my, uh, my deep condolences is what happened on, this, um, on the island of uh, Lesbos and what happened with, uh, with, uh, with unfortunate um, in incident that took lives of many refugees uh, that were instrumentalized by Erdogan to seek for a safe haven in European Union. So 
what is the uh, what are the sanctions really that can hurt Erdogan and stop him, but not to get him so popular in Turkey, because this plan has been going on since 2013, since I remember he outlined all his uh, actions, and now that he's executing them, and we, we are really losing um, in front of our voters on all the fields. We are not able to protect our external borders, and that's shameful. And my solidarity goes to all Greek people and Cypriot people. And the last question is, sorry, about Cyprus. I don't think that Kofi Annan plan uh, was leading anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Jambatsky for the ECR. Please press the speak button, sir. Okay. How is now? Okay. I would like to express my full support for Greece and Cyprus, which are first among the members of you, uh, you who are facing the aggressiveness of Erdogan's new Ottoman policies. I must say I'm really concerned that aggression from Turkey will be directed against Bulgaria in the future. For this reason, I believe that the EU and the EP in particular should take a strong position on this matter. It's time to stop deluding ourselves that Turkey can be part of this union. It's time to show that the violation of international law, the uh, rule of law, and the aggression against neighboring countries has its consequences. It's imp uh, imperative to end the negotiations with the Republic of Turkey for accession to the EU and stop providing any funding for the regime of Erdogan by the Union. Greece is not subject uh, to provocations for the first time. The dropping buses of migrants on the Turkey-Greece border and the arrest of two Greek soldiers and others are the, the uh, demonstration act of aggression by Turkey. We see that the situation is escalating, and it's my personal conviction that if we really believe in world's union and solidarity, we must support Greece and prevent even more aggressive and hostile Turkish provocations. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the second round. Minister, uh, please feel free to answer as many questions as possible. Um, colleagues, the interpreters have announced that they will stay until 10 past 11, so it could be that while the minister is still speaking, we will not have interpretation for all the languages. So it would be kind of you would continue speaking English yeah. uh, and not Greek because of yeah, I will, not everyone I will here in the so. room is fluent in Greek. Well, uh, let me start by uh, announcing something that I, it has been already circulated. And this is, a, uh, I have circulated, we have sent you in your emails a timeline of events of the last uh, few months. And we have sent you also a, an extract of uh, President Erdogan's and other officials' quotes from his speeches in the last few weeks and months that show that the belligerent language, the constant threats, the constant cultivation of this uh, rhetoric of hate is ever-present in his public speaking. So it's not a belligerent tone of the Greeks highlighting the actions of the others that are creating the tensions, but definitely what is the sound coming from Ankara, from all the officials, whenever they speak, especially at their internal crowd, and how they, they cultivate this that shouldn't be the case after all these years of coexistence, which is a resurgence of hate and, resurgence and use of history in terms to, 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 to fire up this adversary. Let me say that uh, Greece, and especially this government, are dedicated to, to dialogue. And dialogue can happen when two parties are dedicated and committed to make this dialogue succeed. But a dialogue cannot happen, and because somebody, uh, you have been asked how, this, uh, how we are willing to go back to the dialogue and how we foresee this dialogue of uh, uh, bringing fruitful uh, results. Dialogue may not succeed under the premise that if you don't agree with me, then we'll have war. This is not a dialogue. This is a blackmail. And we have to 
to have a clear view in our minds that dialogue in conditions of blackmail, it's not a dialogue anymore. If you have military vessels, constant threats uh, on the table, then this is a dialogue under blackmail pressure. It's the same thing that has happened with the migrants last February. That it wasn't only Athens that was blackmailed by the instrumentalization of uh, refugees and uh, migrants, but it was Brussels that they were blackmailed in all the European capitals. That I can overflow you with migrants if you don't go along with my side and with my lines and you don't give me room for maneuver whenever I want it. This was the general premise. Either it should be in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, in Eastern Mediterranean. Either it would be money for hosting migrants, room for internal maneuvers fighting all the adversaries I may have from the opposition. When I disregard the rulings of international courts, in all that, there is a constant tone of blackmail. And in Cyprus, we are ready to go back to dialogue. Greece is not a contracting party uh, by itself. It's a guarantor of power of, of Cyprus, but it's not a contracting party. And this dialogue in Cyprus should be held in a good spirit. And what is a good spirit? You can't have a unified, reunified island with the presence of the military force, military force of a third country. You can't have a unified Cyprus that will be a member state of European Union with 30,000 soldiers, Turkish soldiers on the ground. This is not an independent state, and this is something that nobody, nobody, not any of you would tolerate in your country. So this is a precondition, that we finalize an agreement that it's, the, the agreement should, at the end, remove all foreign forces from the ground and let the people of Cyprus live together, the two communities. Uh, let me say uh, something, words about the German mediation. We welcome the German mediation. And it was very important, uh, it was very important initiative. And I think this is mediation may be alive uh, even today. And we hope that it brings results. And Germany has a role to play. It has a role to play as a, as a major European power, as a presidency of the European Council. And it has also a role to play because of the certain economic ties between Germany and Turkey. And that's why maybe a tool, a great tool in changing the position from a belligerent to a peaceful one. And this is something that we really uh, appreciate. Uh, uh, let me say a few words about uh, uh, whether we seek or we don't seek European uh, solidarity. Yes, we seek European solidarity. But at the end of the day, we know that when there is the chance, we are going to defend ourselves, even alone. We are not going to tolerate any uh, violation of our territory, for example, Castellorizo, which is uh, nowadays is becoming the big issue, a small island in the southern eastern part of Greece is one of the last frontiers of Europe with uh, 700 inhabitants. And we are not going to say to these people, Listen, you are not Greeks anymore, or you don't live in Greece. And we are going to let them uh, be undefended in any military action on the ground. This is, this is something that we have to be clear. But we are not going to provoke this. And we are not going to be the ones that will seek to have a military incident. We don't want. Because we know not only that it's not the way that you solve problems, 
because we know from recent history that frozen conflicts and unresolved conflicts go for ages. And the one who is defending the international law is actually at the end being deprived of its rights, and the one who is exercising power is, uh, has, uh, has form, is forming a new status quo. And this is all over the frozen conflicts that we have even in our continent. Therefore, we don't seek a militarization of the crisis. It's the one who is seeking the, uh, um, the, the change of the status quo, the one who is seeking to provoke a military incident in order to intervene. And that's why we ask our military uh, people, our armed forces, to restrain themselves.